Voucher Goo Ye Old Scots, the Celtic Podcast. Kimra Ha Hula Dunya, how's everyone? On Fekimich Beck and Gallic today, that's Let's Try a Little Gallic. We're going to be in that Traveling Gallic series. In Celtic history, Colonel John Hill and Glencoe. We just had the anniversary of the massacre of Glencoe on yesterday, as a matter of fact. And in everyday Celtic ways, clean as wave. We're hearing music from Katrina Watt. The Corys, Steve Cooney, the two of us, and Bonnie Rideout. And as always, it's a wee bit of Irish trivia to test your knowledge to start us off. Which group of islands in Ireland also give their name to a type of sweater? All right. Check out the Yale Scott Facebook group where you can be a part of the Celtic culture. Keep an eye out for the Celtic Badass, Celtic Music Spotlight, Learn a Gallic Song, Dark Celtic History, and Celtic Radio Videos. Kersh Maha, let's Kick this thing off. Smiam hoid and tolik fall that's for me yes. Smia kaya deadly less on Jim Yulix and I'm sure. Bami wear not to help me, kiss and to hear he lit my machine. Gun chicken and cliff show, I work you, I ask her a bite. If you divorce, not. Kushit Padamatur Alal, Bur Kiana Sir Adamaj, is Gun Kain Chanska fed and Gum Badi fed Tanamid. If you the most now hold an old, if you the most now hold an old, if you the most now hold the old. Oh. 
was Lunik Vikloich by Katrina Watt. And now it's time for Fekimich Beck in Gaelic. Now I'm not an authority on the Gaelic language, I just love learning it. I struggle like everybody else. But what I teach comes right from well-respected Gaelic teachers. So I hope you find it interesting, informative, and fun. And I always display on the screen what I am discussing so you can follow along, even if you don't understand my messed up, broken middle America Gaelic. All right. We're in that traveling Gaelic segment, and today is directions in Gaelic. And the first one is, how do I get to whatever it is? Kimurahami mi adol yan. All right. And here are some of the things you can be getting to. The train station. And station traina. The bus station. And station bus. The airport. Um, Forst etter. Downtown, Vala. The youth hostel, An Ostel. The hotel, An Tayosta. The American, Canadian, Australian, or British consulate, and Kosulich, American, me, Canada, Australia, Fretten. Wow. Where are there a lot of, whatever. Cachavale Moran An. So, where there are a lot of hotels, Cachavale Moran Tayosta An. All right, where there are a lot of restaurants, Cachavale Moran Tai V An. And so on. Bars, Taishensha. And here's one that you might need to, you know, if you are in an area that speaks a lot of Gaelic. Can you show me on the map? And Oren Gut Shelton Give Er Avapa. All right. Street Rot. Turn left. Chinigi Hun Live Kli. Turn right. Chinigi Gun Do Live Hirscht. Which left is Kli and right is Chess. Straight ahead, Jerek Erlasht. North, Chua. South, Jess. East, Er. West, Ear. Yeah. Uphill, Suis. Downhill, Sius. Taxi, Taxi. That one's pretty simple. Take me to blank, please. Gav me go. Vala Masa de Hole. How much does it cost to get to blank? Jaya Fris Ersen Don, I'm sorry, Jaya Fris Ersen Dol Jan Donijan. All right, Donijan being Edinburgh. Take me there, please. Gav me on Masa de Hole. All right, that's it for Fekimich Beck and Gallic. I hope you enjoyed it. Cruel is the snow that sweeps Glencoe and covers the grave O'Donnell. And cruel was the foe that raped Glencoe and murdered the house on the They came in a blizzard, we offered them heat. A roof for their heads, dry shoes for their feet. We wined them and dined them, they ate all our meat. And they slept in the house of MacDonald. Oh, cruel is the snow that sweeps Glencoe. And covers the grave of Donald. And cruel was the foe that raped Glencoe and murdered the house of MacDonald. They came from Fort William, we murder in mind. The Campbell had orders, King William had signed. It ought to the sword, these words underlined. And leave none alive called MacDonald. Oh, cruel 
as the snow that sweeps them go and covers a grave or dark. And cruel was the foe that raped Glencoe and murdered the house of MacDonald. They came in the night when the men were asleep. This band o' oh, Argyles through snow soft and deep like murdering foxes among helpless sheep they slaughtered the house of MacDonald. Oh cruel is the snow that sweeps Glencoe and covers the grave of oh, Donald. And cruel was the foe that raped Glencoe the house of MacDonald. Some died in their beds at the hand of the foe. Some fled in the night, were lost in the snow. Some lived to accuse him, was struck the first blow. But gone was the house of MacDonald. Oh, cruel is the snow that sweeps Glencoe. Uncovers the grave, O oh, Donald. And cruel was the foe that raped Glencoe and murdered the house of MacDonald. Oh, cruel is the snow that sweeps Glencoe and covers the grave, O oh, Donald. And cruel was the foe that raped Glencoe. All right, that was The Massacre of Glencoe by the Corys. And as I said earlier, Saturday, yesterday was the anniversary of The Massacre of Glencoe back on February 13, 1692. Now, today in Celtic history, we're going to be talking about Colonel John Hill and his relationship with Glencoe. Now, it's an odd fact that out of all the civil and military figures involved in the massacre of Glencoe, the one man who tried to prevent it from happening was an Englishman, Colonel John Hill, commander of Fort William. Hill was born in Kent and served in Cromwell's armies when they occupied Scotland in the early 1650s. In May 1657, he was appointed governor of the fort at Inverlochy, the present Fort William where he managed to establish good relations with the Lochaber chiefs. At the restoration of Charles II in 1660, his superior general, Monk, decided that the Inverlochy fort should be evacuated and dismantled, and Hill left Lochaber and settled in Ireland, where he stayed until 1690. In July of 1690, Major General Hugh Mackay, commander-in-chief of the army in Scotland for King William II and III, built Fort William on the Cromwellian foundations at Inverlochy and appointed Hill as commander of the new fort. On the basis of his previous acquaintance with the area, at Hill's request, King William granted the adjoining settlement of Meritiburg, today the town of Fort William, a charter on 13th November 1690 as part of renewed plans to promote a civilian settlement in Lochaber. Hill again managed to establish peaceful relations within the Lochaber chiefs, who had all been Jacobite supporters in the First Rising, 1689-90, and was able to prevent the West Highland clans from reassembling as a Jacobite army. A general cessation of arms was agreed, and King William proclaimed that all the chiefs must take the oath of allegiance to him by 31st of December, 1691, or face reprisals. Late in December 1691, many major chiefs hurried to submit, fearing a full-scale military attack by the government. However, Alistair MacLean, MacDonald of Glencoe, chief of the Glencoe MacDonalds, was unable to make up his mind about taking the oath. And when he finally decided to do so, he left a little late. He arrived at Fort William on the 31st of December and asked Hill to administer the oath. However, Hill had no power to do this. The oath had to be sworn to a civilian authority, the sheriff in Inverary, and not to the military commander in Fort William. Trying to help McLean, Hill gave him a letter explaining the confusion and sent him to Inverary. 
As it was the middle of winter, it took the chief six days to make the journey, but the sheriff there, Campbell of Ardkinglas, allowed him to take the oath and also wrote a letter to Edinburgh explaining why McCain, McLean had been late in swearing. Hill had, in the meantime, made a formal preliminary agreement with MacDonald of Glengarry for that chief's surrender, which placed both Glengarry and Glencoe under his protection. And he ignored an order from Sir Thomas Livingston, uh, commander-in-chief of the military in Scotland, to attack them if they held out. Now it seems, however, that the authorities in Edinburgh, and particularly John Dalrymple, Master of Stair, ignored Ard King Les's expl expl explanatory letter and advised the king accordingly. On the 16th of January, 1692, Hill unexpectedly received King William's instructions, including a conditional order to extirpate, extirpate the Glencoe men as a warning, with a violent covering with a violent covering letter from Dalrymple, Sir Thomas Livingston then wrote to Hill's deputy commander, who was hostile to Hill and wanted to replace him, emphasizing that destroying Glencoe was the way to win the favor of Dalrymple and the government. As Hill later testified, he considered these orders a nasty, dirty thing and was resolved rather to lay down his commission than to have put them in execution and he delayed action, hoping for a countermand. Unfortunately, no such counter-order arrived, and by the 12th of February he had no pretext left for delay, and needing to reassert his authority over his offers, officers, and especially over Hamilton, who was plotting against him with politicians in Edinburgh, he issued a brief um, authorization to Hamilton to march to Glencoe and execute Livingston's orders. The massacre ensued the next morning, the 13th of February, 1692. Hill then recovered his courage, ignored all orders to hunt down survivors, and asked permission to resettle them in their homes in Glencoe. His regiment kept order in the Highlands despite being undermanned, and he again worked to moderate Edinburgh's more disruptive orders. He attended the official inquiries held into the massacre of Glencoe of 1693 and 1694, and in the latter he was exonerated, but had to agree to the suppression of evidence incriminating Livingston. He was knighted about 1696, retired in 1698, and died in April 1701 in Edinburgh. So, I guess there was some good people there that was trying to stop this from happening, but... If the king wants it, the king gets it. Fallen head over heels and laughs 
so they fled across the sea, but the vengeful wave never let them be. No one could foresee that tale, could terminate that way. They couldn't keep forbidden love, even so they prayed. Then there came a raging tide, taking her away. Alrighty, that was uh, Clean as Wave by the two of us. Now it's time for Everyday Celtic Ways. Clean as Wave. Now this is my favorite tragic love story. Clina of the Fair Hair was a daughter of the She. The She were the fairy people of Irish folklore, said to live beneath the hills and the, often identified as the remnant of the ancient Tuath de Danon. Uh, Clina fell in love with Calvin of the Curly Locks, a prince of Ulster. She became so enamored by him that she would frequently visit him from the other world. And Kevin became so enamored of her that when she left to return home, he knew only that he must do whatever to stay with her. He stole a fishing boat, pulled up to the stony strand nearby, and attempted to follow her. The little Kura was tossed about like jetsam upon the stormy sea, so much so that the poor young man nearly drowned. Manon, a warrior and the king of the underworld in Irish mythology, took pity on him and brought him to safety into his magical lands. There, Kevin spent many happy days in Kleena's company, until one day they were warned by Fond, Manon's wife, that the sea god thought it was time that Kevin uh, returned to his own people, to his own world. Devastated, the lovers couldn't bear to be parted. They together stole Menonin's magical boat, the Wave Sweeper, and set sail for Ireland. Back on the strand, and the strand is land near the sea, Cleona fell fast asleep after their long sea voyage, and Kevin went hunting for a deer to provide for their supper. Having learned of their treachery, Menonin was furious. He pounded his fist into the sea and sent a huge wave towards them to reclaim the runaway maiden. But by doing this, she was swept into the sea to her death. Mananin was so distraught by his actions that he made the waves relentlessly pound the shore there to this day in her memory. Aww.
Alrighty. That was Shebek Shemor, Mall of the High Bend Ferry Mounds, by Steve Cooney on the Highland Session album. Top of love Herchin, that's it for today's podcast. But before I let you go, the trivia question answer. Now, it's the Aaron Islands in Ireland to give their name to a sweater and loads of other wool products because, you know, sheep are everywhere. Remember to check out my YouTube channel, Yield Scott. It's got the Celtic Badass, the Celtic Music Spotlight, the Celtic Podcast, Speaking Our Language, Learn a Gaelic Song, Dark Celtic History, and lots more. And my Facebook group, Yield Scott, where you can give me your insights and inputs on all things Celtic. Martian Leave and Drazda, bye for now, but I'm going to let you go with a song. The Boat Hoisted the Sails, Gone to Sea by Bonnie Rideout. Enjoy! Thank you.